this meeting is being How much the shovel? Here I am running around in no gas cards. Not the smartest thing in the world.
Abby, Evelyn has COVID. Oh, no. Yeah, but still. But still. Okay. Okay. No, Rick was just stretching. Okay. Um, I have... <laughs> Uh, I have uh, two prayer requests myself, uh, one of which is um, Linda uh, worked with a young lady, um, you may have to help me on this, and they, uh, they had a daughter in Germany who had COVID who was over there. Carolyn, Carolyn's not here, Carolyn's, thank you. Okay, and they had a daughter in Germany and they had to get her over here um, because she apparently has cancer, and they were able to get over here to uh, to the to a cancer center. But now our prayers are with them that they are able to uh, uh, to to cure this cancer. And then um, the other one is for a family of a young man, 29 years old, um, who right before Christmas passed away. Um, so um, you know, you know um, sad things happen, unfortunately. So. Father, we lift this up in prayer to you. We ask that you would be with all of these people, keep people safe, be with those who grieve. You are, uh, you are the, uh, you are the, the the healer. You are the comforter. We would ask that you be with all of these people, and all who are out there in need this morning. We would ask that you would be with them. This we ask for in the name of your Son Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let us take a deep breath as we start worship today. It is our first Sunday. It's Epiphany, and um, we are so happy to be here after a Christmas season. And just take a breath, and if you didn't share a name that you wish a prayer to go up to, just breathe in that thought of that person or that whatever that um, is, uh, has a place in your heart right now. So um, we will get started with our opening song. What hope we hold that starlit night A king was born in Bethlehem His journey long we seek the light That leads to the hallowed manger ground Oh 
Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of God has risen among us. We are awake. We are alive. Praise God for deliverance and blessings. Lift up your eyes to see all around you. Let your hearts rejoice and be radiant with hope. May justice water the earth like a shower. Let righteousness and peace abound. Receive again the promises of the gospel. Participate in the mystery of Jesus Christ. God's ways are being revealed to us today. Our church proclaims the unsearchable riches of Christ. Please rise as we sing our first hymn. become clear to us in Jesus Christ, we come with boldness to claim our relationship with you. We are grateful for pioneers in the faith whose stewardship has salvaged for us a way of life rooted in the gospel. The flame. <laughs> Keep going. There we go. Oh, it's starting. The flames you ignited them have not gone out. In spite of our faithlessness, your wisdom, wisdom is still proclaimed in the church, challenging centers of earthly power with the claims of heaven. Today, our search for meeting has led us to this place of worship. You are here. We rejoice. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
children's sermon and I don't think we have any kids online so I don't think so so we're gonna go ahead oh Sometimes, Jim, I need the children's message to understand. <laughs> I think that there has to be a certain joy in worship. I, I truly believe that. It's, it's not a somber time. It's not a time to come and say, it's a time for, it's a time for joy. It's a time to let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it's a time to let the Holy Spirit fill you. It's a time to be, to be filled by the Holy Spirit and a time to worship in joy. So, uh, boy, that got louder. And so, uh, yes, and so I'm, I'm always thankful. Um, and I always miss the sounds of the little ones in the, in the pews when they're not here. So, thank you. Our first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Isaiah speaks of a new age to come, not as a future hope, but as good news already being accomplished. Creating an image of a new Jerusalem, the prophet speaks of a time when all people will come before the Lord. Note how the gifts of gold and frankincense appear again in the story of the Magi. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is our first lesson. 
Our second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Writing from prison, Paul, considering himself least of all the saints, writes that through this witness, the mysteries of God and Christ continue to be revealed. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purposes that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have to access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This ends the second lesson. Once in royal David's city stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ, a little child. <clears throat> he came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, and his shelter was a and his cradle was a stall With the poor and mean and lowly Lived on earth a Savior holy And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. He shall lead his children on to the place where he has gone. Not in that poor lowly stable we 
So now we hear the story of the three magi, the three wise men, the three kings, many, many names for the three people who came to see Jesus. This is Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him, calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people he inquired of them, where is the Messiah? Where was he to be born? They told him, in Bethlehem in Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for this child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening the treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. This is an amazing Sunday as far as the readings go. But we have to back up for a hot moment. One of the things that I kind of dislike about the lectionary is that it skips big periods of time. Last Sunday, we talked about Jesus already being 12 years old in the temple. We have to back up for a minute to when Jesus was but a week old. And Joseph and Mary took him to the temple. And it is at this time at the temple that Jesus actually got his official name. The priests in the temple or the rabbis, uh, when asked what his name would be, as Gabriel had said, they named him Jesus. But now we need to skip ahead 33 days. We need to go 40 days from the time that Jesus was born to what the Jewish people called the ceremony of purification. Remember, the Jewish people had a real, I don't want to say fear, but they were very uneasy with blood things. Remember the woman who came to Jesus? She worked her way through the crowd to touch his Cape, don't scare me, you sh shake your heads, yeah. So, so, so Jesus healed her, she had a blood disease for 12 years. It took 40 days after a woman gave birth for the Jewish people to consider her purified. So they came to the temple for the ceremony of purification. Now, what's critically important about this is that when they came into the temple, there was an older man. He was a God-fearing man, um, and his name was Simeon. And Simeon heard the Holy Spirit tell him to come into the temple. And he came into the temple, and he picked up the baby Jesus and held him in his arms. You see, the Holy Spirit had told Simeon that before he died, there would be a Savior born. A Savior born that would save Israel. And so Simeon recognized through the Holy Spirit that this is the child who will become the Savior. Joseph and Mary are very amazed, of course, as is everyone else in the temple. And Simeon says, 
I have seen he who will save the Israel nation. And now it is okay for me to leave. In other words, I have now seen him. And now I am prepared, God, to come back home to you. You see, this is critically important because it sets the stage for the concept that Jesus is the Messiah. Joseph and Mary knew Jesus to be the Messiah because Gabriel had talked to them. But this sets the stage in the temple through Simeon to say, this baby will become the Savior. This baby will become the one that saves Jerusalem. And Simeon goes on to say, he will save many people, and many people will not listen to him. And he looks at Joseph and Mary, and he says, like a sword, you will feel much grief and much sorrow before this is over. Which is a premonition, if you will, of what will happen. We won't see Joseph, as I said last week, after, the, after uh, Jesus is in the temple at 12, Joseph falls off. We never see Joseph again. But we will follow Jesus partly through the eyes of Mary. And we will follow Jesus especially at the crucifixion with Mary and the grief and the sorrow that Mary feels. And then outside there was a very old a prophetess, her name was Anna. She spent all of her time at the temple praying. And she was telling the people outside, this is the baby who will save Israel. So what is an epiphany? What is a pit? You know, we use a lot of words and we throw them out and we learn a lot of words in seminary, like cool words like theotokos. What's the Theotokos? The mother of God. Mary is the Theotokos, the mother of God. We learn all these cool names and whatnot. The problem is, I never remember, so I always have to look them up. But um, Epiphany is another one of these really cool names. And it is an event or an action that, in effect, surprises us, that shows us something, that through this we discover something. Now, I'm going to argue that the first epiphany, if you will, came from Adam and Eve. After they had eaten from the tree of knowledge, they realized that they were naked, and so they sewed fig leaves together in order to cover up, and that night God came into the garden and called them out and couldn't find him, and when, when Adam finally came out, he saw he was in fig leaves, and he knew they had eaten from the tree, and he said, did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? And I would imagine that Adam turned to Eve and said, man, we're in trouble now. That was truly an epiphany. But this epiphany this morning involves three men, or at least tradition tells us three. The reality is that we don't know how many men there were. There could have been all kinds of people that came to see Jesus from the East. Tradition tells us that one was from Persia, one was from Arabia, one was from India, one was 20, one was 40, one was 60. But I think it's important that we look at, if you will, what the wise men were. There's nothing to tell us that they were kings. Even though I love the song, We Three Kings, there's nothing that says they were kings. In fact, uh, if, we, if we trace back the, 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 the idea of the wise men, uh, most likely they were from a caste of people, and I hate that word, but the caste of people in Persia that were more like priests. But if we look up magi and we talk about magi, magi almost implies a sense of magic. In fact, the old French word from the 1300s that they pulled magi out of literally meant magic. So there is something to these people that is mystical. They were astrologers. They read the stars. 
And they traveled between eight and 900 miles to come and see this baby. And when they came to see the baby, they came to see the baby who was born the king of the Jews. Now we have to be careful here because we're kind of hearing two different things. From Simeon, we're talking about he who will save Israel. From the wise men, we are hearing he who will become the king of the Jews. We are not hearing from the wise men, he who will be the Messiah, he who will be the Savior. We are hearing he will be the king of the Jews. Now, this is another critical saying, because if we skip forward to Good Friday, what is it that they finally get to, in order to be able to crucify Jesus? What is it that the Roman government has to have in order to crucify Jesus? It can't be that he's blasphemous. That's not enough. You can't crucify somebody because of blasphemy or what he says or what he thinks. They get him because the... Uh, uh, the Pharisees claim that he is the king of the Jews, that he is saying he is the king of the Jews. Now he is a threat to Caesar. Now he is a threat to the establishment, and now they have a reason to kill him. So right here at the beginning, at the epiphany with the wise men, we begin to set the stage that will eventually get Jesus killed. The fact that he is the king of the Jews. But it's mystical. It's mystical. And I love that part. I love that part of the mystery. The star, the brilliance of the star that leads them. The star that the shepherds see when they come to Bethlehem. When they come to the manger. Now, we want to group all this in our Christmas manger scene. Like we did with the kids on Christmas Eve. Bring the wise men up. But no. The wise men were a year to two out. Jesus was already a year and a half to two years old. I guess about that. A year and a half to two years old when the wise men got there. He wasn't in the stable anymore. He was in a house. Now, at that time, there were oftentimes there were houses that were built and they would have a manger in the back or could have been a cave, frankly. He could have been in a cave. So it's possible that he stayed in the house where the manger was. But wherever he stayed, Matthew tells us that he stayed in a house. So when the Magi got there, they didn't go to the manger. They came to a house, and they gave him the gold, the myrrh, and the frankincense, which were all things that they would have given to a king. So it's a wonderful story, if you will. It's a wonderful accounting. Only Matthew brings it up. It's not anywhere else. It's only in Matthew. This idea that these people come to pay homage to this newborn child. If they were not kings, if they were uh, uh, astrologers and people from the East, then it shows us that everyone and anyone can come to God. You don't have to be a king. You don't have to be a rabbi. You don't have to be a priest. Anyone can come to God. Anyone can give honor to Jesus. What an amazing thought. Anyone. You don't have to be reincarnated and born 500 times in order to get to God. Like the Hebrews. Like the Hebrews. Um, like the Hindus, I meant to say. You don't have to do that. Anyone can. Remember the morning I taught the kids, I said, how do you pray to God? And I said, all you do is reach up and say, hey, God, it's me. Charlie was here at the time. Uh, it's me, Charlie. That's all you have to do to pray to God. I'm here. That's what's so critical about the why. Ordinary people, ordinary people that can come to God, ordinary people that can praise Jesus. What an amazing statement. 
And then Isaiah. Isaiah is also, if you will, an epiphany. You see, remember I've said before, there's three Isaiahs. One Isaiah wrote before the exile to Babylonia. One wrote during the exile. And the other one wrote after the exile. This message this morning is as the people are leaving exile, as they are returning to this city of Jerusalem, which is totally destroyed. It's to even the walls are knocked down. There's nothing in Jerusalem. There are some people in Jerusalem that did not get taken into captivity. They were probably the poorest of the poor. So for 70 years or whatever, they've been in struggling in Jerusalem trying to exist. But Isaiah says, open your eyes and see what's going on. Open your eyes and see what's going on. The people are returning. Your sons and your daughters are returning. They're coming home. And all of the Jewish people that were scattered throughout the whole region that weren't in captivity, they're coming home. God has not left you. Remember the people thought God had deserted them? Yes. They thought God had deserted them? Yes. God has not deserted you. He will make Jerusalem great again. He will have all of these people coming to Jerusalem with riches and gold. The fishermen will catch fish. The uh, merchants will sell their goods. Jerusalem will, in effect, be reborn. Jerusalem will rise again. Right? Open your eyes and see what's going on around. What God is doing in your life. What God is making happen in your life. You see, that's the same thing that we need to say. Open your eyes and look around and see what God is doing in your life at this very moment. And I'd like to suggest to you that we are about to have our own epiphany. I'd like to suggest to you that when Pastor Larry, Pastor Laura, I don't know why I want to say Larry, when Pastor Laura, yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> when Pastor Lawrence gets here, we're going to have our own epiphany. Because Pastor Lawrence is going to lead us into a new chapter in the life of Salem. He's going to lead us into a new chapter, a new time, a new sense of going out in the community to spread God's word, a new sense of going out in the community to do God's work. I myself am fantastically excited about Pastor Lawrence. I'm fantastically excited to see what that chapter is going to be. What surprises are going to happen. Where the Holy Spirit will lead us with the guidance of Pastor Lawrence. Truly, we're going to open up our eyes and we're going to see where the Holy Spirit is leading. And where God is leading us. I promise you, it is going to be a fantastically exciting time. It is truly going to be an epiphany in itself. And I am so thankful that through this God-led process, God has brought us a pastor that can take us out into the community, that can teach us and lead us and help us grow spiritually. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please let us rise and sing Go Tell It on the Mountain.
And all the people of God, let us pray for the church, those in need in all of God's creation. We pray for our leaders, that they would lead people, and that they would lead and be in the thoughts and efforts of all of those that they lead, and not just pay attention to a few. We pray for those in need of healing of mind, body, and soul, and especially for those who have lost their way in this world. We pray for those who find the holidays discouraging rather than joyful. We pray for those who have been in grief over this holiday, and we ask that you be with them. You, Father, are the great comforter. We pray for all those in the armed forces all of our public servants, our police, our firefighters, and especially all of those in the armed forces who are overseas and not able to be home with their families at this Christmas. We left up to you all who have died, and we ask you to give comfort to their families and friends who struggle with the grief of their passing. Give them hope and comfort in the knowledge that we will eventually be united for all eternity in your heavenly kingdom. And we ask you to walk with all of us as this pandemic continues. Give us strength and encouragement as we remain diligent in our efforts to protect not only ourselves, but to protect others. And be with us as we struggle with our daily challenges. Give us strength and courage to walk on your pathway to see the world from your perspective and to make decisions as we believe that you would have us make. But most importantly, Father, we give you thanks for sending us your son, Jesus. For sending your son to be an example for us as to how we live our lives, to eventually be a sacrifice for us, for our salvation and forgiveness of our sins, so that we might always be able to be righteous in your eyes. We thank you for the wise men who show us that we can all come to you at any time that we need to that all we have to do is reach up our hand and say, hey, God, it's me, and God will listen. All of this we give thanks for in the name of your son, Jesus. And now I ask you to please be with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, our creator, who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed, Hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this, this day our, our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts, debts as, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and lead but us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. As our love for one another increases and abounds, so does our generosity. The circle of our concern widens. Our passion for justice expands. Our desire to join in Christ's redeeming word extends to the whole human family. What a privilege to have so much to share. Please rise as we sing in thanksgiving for all of our offerings. join in our dedication prayer. Thank you, God, for this family and friends of faith, which enriches our lives and enables us to share. Thank you for making us aware that some faint with fear and others dwell in hopelessness. We are grateful that you show us ways to lift the burdens of our sisters and brothers. May our offerings further this ministry among us, and beyond our community. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray. God of all creations, you have, what you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for this world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Notice that we have two sacraments, both of which are from the earth, right? The wine from the grapes and the bread. We don't have seven sacraments in the UCC like the Episcopalians. We have two, both of which are from the both of which are from the earth. You are indeed a holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and greatest, the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming and into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, he blessed it, and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new promise, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving passions and death, his resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord, and we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving. Lord, with your word and Holy Spirit, bless us, your servants, with your gifts of bread and wine, may, be, be, may we be filled with your heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin. May we live as your holy people and be given our salvation along with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all in honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And if you would please take the little containers. Please eat the wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. And if you would peel off the top for the juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us give thanks that the God is so merciful and cares so deeply about each and every one of us, his children. Amen. Please rise as we sing Joy to the World.
God sends us on our way, a bold and confident <clears throat> people, look up and be guided by the star of joy. We will come eyes to the presence of God. We will look for God's activity all around us. God's purposes in Christ are to be lived out by us. We are called to invite others to share in God's grace. We will witness to all we have seen and heard. By God's power, we will minister to others. The glory of God has risen among us. We are blessed beyond all deserving. What we have received, we pass on with joy. We offer to all the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Amen. And, now, and let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.